everyone, my name is Yashmi Priya and in today's video I'm going to be creating these illustrations of some butterflies using the Derwent Intense pencils. Now I'm starting off by just doing some uh, graphite drawings in my A4 uh, sketchbook and I'm using just a regular graphite pencil, not a water soluble graphite pencil because I am going to uh, fine line everything and ink it. Once everything is inked in, then I'm going to remove the graphite with a uh, kneaded eraser and then I'm going to start working with the ink tents. It's important to remove the graphite before you start working with the ink tents. That's just to avoid having any smudging of the graphite or mixing of the graphite in uh, the pure colors of your ink tents. So, um, I'm once again drawing a variety of different uh, butterflies and I'm drawing them with uh, different patterns and different shapes, different sizes. Um, I just wanted to create a variety of uh, different butterflies and create this entire spread dedicated to the butterflies. So, um, or dedicated to butterflies. So, I'm now just working on the second one. And then I'm going to do a few, um, one larger one in the center. And this will be more of my focal point for the butterfly page and butterfly spread. And then I will have um, some smaller ones on the side of that. And then I'll have two more at the bottom of the page. So now I'm using a reference photo for this because um, I want the uh, proportions to be right, the shape of the wings to be right because um, as you'll see later on, um, I did try to draw another butterfly and I actually um, didn't like how it came out, but I did fix it up, but I was still not too happy with it. Um, but it's very important to follow your reference photo and really get it uh, accurate. And also because the butterflies, their wings are uh, the same on either side, it's very important to try to get the correct alignment and the correct uh, positioning of them and the size of them. Otherwise, they do look a bit... Um, um, off and they won't look really, um, they won't match really. Although they don't have to be perfectly 100% accurate or 100% the same, but it's preferable to have them similar so that they have a better, a better appearance when you're done with them. Um, sometimes the reference photo can be at a certain angle, so it looks like one wing is smaller than the one on the other side. So just bear that in mind when picking reference photos. Now that butterfly that I'm drawing at the moment is the one that I wasn't happy with. Um, at this stage it looked fine and I was happy with it and I thought no it's fine because that is the shape of the butterfly. It looks more like a leafy shape but uh, once the colors started getting added on I realized that no it was not really looking good. But I managed to at the end uh, add a bit more um, shape to the wings and change it about and uh, kind of fix it but I kept on going and that's something that I always let everyone know if you make a mistake in your sketchbook everything doesn't have to be perfect and although the entire page I'm happy with that one I wasn't happy with but I didn't let that stop me from completing the page and I didn't just rip the page out or um, fold it over and say okay I'm, st I'm starting again or I'm not continuing with it I just went with the piece and I was very happy with all of them except that one was not my favorite but at the end of the, I was able to kind of salvage it so it's important to try to just work with the piece and try to see how much you can um, get done and maybe you can even surprise yourself and have a correct the piece that you don't like or a specific element of your drawing that you don't like you may find that you are able to work around it and create a good picture that you're quite satisfied with even though it wasn't your in initial um, uh, what you planned or what you visualized so um, now I went in just to the fine liner and I'm just going over all the graphite um, drawings with the fine liner and I'm just um, adding all those designs. In certain places you may notice I do deviate from the initial sketch and that's just because I realized something was off or maybe it wasn't uh, completed. I didn't add a certain pattern in certain places or I wanted it to be a bit more um, shaded or whatever the case may be. And then I added that um, as I was inking. And that's the good thing about inking. You can add what you want to. And you can leave out things that you're not happy with once you look at the actual drawing. Because sometimes when you do the initial drawing, you have, oh, it's a, it looks a certain way to you. But once you're done with the drawing or you start fine lining it or adding color, then you realize, no, but this was not right. And I should have maybe adjusted it. Like in this case, watching the foot footage now I can see my mistake with this particular butterfly and why I wasn't happy with it because of the proportions of the bottom of the wings the bottom um, if you're looking at it the bottom right wing 
but uh, at the time of drawing it and inking it i didn't realize it um, or actually drawing it at the time of inking it i already inked it and then i realized it but then i just went with it and continued and i didn't give up on the on the piece just because of that one um, minor problem i mean it's one butterfly among all these others that came out fine so it's not really something so uh, major and after all i am working in my sketchbook this is a piece just to have fun um, and just uh, work with the, the with ink tense pencils and just you know i enjoy working with them because they're so vibrant and saturated when you activate them with water so it was just a fun um, piece that i wanted to create and obviously share with you and show you um, how i created these illustrations i have used the derwin ink tense pencils before uh, where I did my uh, Animal Habitat eye art series, if you'd like to see that. Uh, those are much more in detail and they're much smaller and there's also a lot more uh, realistic look to them uh, because I did over 100 and I think 50 animals, I think 153. So if you want to look at that, there is a playlist on my um, page, on my homepage, on my YouTube channel where you can watch all of those uh, videos. I believe there's 10 in total because I did a different video for every habitat with different animals. So that was the inking portion of uh, this uh, drawing and now I'm going in with the ink tents. Now I layered in a color, uh, different yellows, uh, also some orange and I just went over it with some uh, water. And I am keeping my brush fairly um, damp and not too soaked because I don't want to over blend the colors and I don't want to uh, like really soak the paper up a lot. I just want to be able to activate the uh, pencil. So now I'm going in with the black and I'm just now going around the design. And um, a thing to remember also is that once the area is dry, you can relayer with uh, the intense pencil again, which you can either activate again or you can just let it uh, show the the texture or the colors of the pencil it's up to you depending on what you are trying to achieve with your drawing and uh, if you want that texture to show through in this case I wanted everything quite smooth so I just went over with some more pencil and then used the uh, wet brush with just some water to activate it now um, I am working with a really small brush uh, for this one because I want to not I don't want to let any of the, the ink smudge into other areas because um, now I'm working with the black so I don't want that to smudge in and blend in with the color and then have a problem where we have smudging and um, a, muddy, a muddy look with, um, uh, with the black going into the colored areas. So I am going slowly and also by not uh, letting the area where you already previously uh, worked with the water, letting that dry a bit and then working also helps. Otherwise you will have some of the color bleed through when you're activating it if the lighter areas are still wet. Now you will see I did have areas that I retained the white of the paper when I was inking but I covered everything with the black because it was very difficult to go around those very small um, uh, round spots but I am going to come back later and I'm going to uh, add some white spots with a, a white jelly roll pen. So I'm just working on the body for the butterfly and once it's completely dry, then I start adding the little spots and designs and patterns on the wings. Um, it looks as if I worked continuously, but I did give it a little bit of time to dry. It dries very fast uh, with the intense pencils, provided you don't use too much of water to activate the pencil. So um, I'm still touching up here and there with the pencil and um, adding added a bit more color to that uh, butterfly. And now I'm moving on to the second butterfly. Now the second butterfly, um, I wasn't sure what color I wanted to make it. Um, I'm using the reference photos just as a guideline, but I wanted to create more neutral tones and natural tones to them and have some that are brighter than others. So I decided to add some pink to this butterfly, but keep it a bit more uh, muted or a bit more uh, uh, less um, bright and vibrant. Uh, although it is vibrant, the color pink but I am just trying to give it a bit more of a subtle color um, so you can see I laid in a different variety of uh, pinks and um, also the black I put in the black um, already um, but I'm being careful not to go into the black areas as yet um, and just work on the uh, pink areas just so that I don't have any um, blending of the black into the pink and making a bit of a mess with the muddy uh, colors blending one into the other and you can see with the intense I'm not really 
pressing hard when I'm layering in the pencil but I'm also not paying attention to the uh, direction of my strokes or any lines that are there because once you go over with the water those lines automatically disappear and uh, you don't see the pencil lines of uh, your initial uh, coloring in or layering of your pencil although you do if you do want to add some texture you could with the, with the pencil after you're done uh, with um, your drawing just to add a bit more texture but then that will show but if you're just activating it with water it smoothens out perfectly and also the colors look very vibrant so you see me there adding a different variety of colors and I'm trying to keep the different browns and blacks separate so I don't just go over the black and go into the brown I start off going into the brown and then move into the black or if I work on the black area I clean my brush I do have a paper towel at all times while I'm working which I keep dabbing off water as well as uh, rinsing my brush and cleaning it off before I move to another color if they are next to each other and I don't want them to blend in with each other so for these two uh, smaller um, butterflies, I kept them blue, but I changed them about. Um, the one I just kept it relatively just a simple um, blue tone. Uh, the second one also a blue tone, a bit more vibrant. And I also added a bit more black to the um, edges of the butterfly just so that the butterfly looks um, a bit different from the other one. I don't want them to be identical. And then now I'm moving on to the main butterfly in the center. Now, um, at the moment, it doesn't really look on camera like I'm adding much color, but I'm keeping it very muted, uh, neutral tones like some beiges, uh, browns, uh, light browns, and then some black. So I'm keeping it a very um, subtle, neutral uh, colors, browns, beige, uh, and black. And uh, you can see now after layering those colors, now I'm also on the lighter areas uh, where it looked like I didn't add any color. I did add some white uh, that's just to help blend in the beige into the white areas and then create that uh, soft blend of the browns as well. So you can see I'm working section by section. Um, I'm even working into the black areas. Now in this particular one, I'm still working with the black but letting part of that go into the brown because that's the kind of effect I wanted. I wanted it to be that blending effect from the light from the dark into the light um, or not into the light but from the black into the darker brown. So now I'm moving on to the butterfly that I did not like. So I kept the colors more orange and yellow and some black. And um, looking back at the footage now, it's not so bad as I thought of it when I was actually working with it because that is the actual shape of the butterfly. But for some reason, I just did not think it looks really like a real butterfly. So um, I tried to fix it by adding a bit more pencil around the edge with the ink tents and then blending that and adding a bit more shape. Um, and yeah then i just tried to um, ink the entire thing and tried my best to fix it but i will come back later on and add some dots on it uh, with white uh, with a white uh, jelly roll pen and that makes a big difference of to that piece over to that particular butterfly now i'm moving on to the next one now this butterfly i wanted to keep it also a uh, neutral colors um, have some subtle uh, beige browns and a hint of green here and there so i layered in other colors and you can see i do a lot of layering in of all the different colors in the different areas before i even start with the water with the brush and um, you can see i started adding the spots after i was done with the blending of the colors of the butterfly and then i just use the brush just to activate those black areas and just make them really stand out added a bit more shadow areas in certain places and then I was done with that butterfly. Now for the final butterfly, I was decided to make it a bit more brighter and saturated because I did the first one, which was that orange and yellow butterfly. So I thought it's good to end on a brighter note. So I kept this a brighter green, but I'm using varieties of different greens just to really let the sun pop and uh, bring the entire piece together and let it also have some black in there as well. Uh, the black is very important for the butterflies. I think it really helps to define whether it's the edging, the lines, the body, or uh, little spots or patterns on the wings. I think black really helps uh, bring the butterflies to life. And well, with ink tints, it's such a saturated, vibrant um, medium to use that it really looks good when you're done with the um, entire piece. Um, and once you blend everything out with water, it really brings it to life. So now I just did some touch-ups on certain areas and 
I am just adding a bit more changes to the butterfly that I told you I was not happy with and I am going to add those little, little spots to it and I think that uh, kind of helped with that one. So I guess that's it for this video. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed it. If you have, don't forget to like and share. Feel free to comment below and don't forget to subscribe. Till the next one. Bye.